we know that longitudes help us in finding locations of places. There is another way in which longitudes are helpful to us. They help us in tracking time. We already have clocks and watches for keeping track of our time. So then, how do these longitudes help us in any way? Well, for that, we need to learn two concepts. The concept of local time and standard time. First, let's deal with local time. We know that the Earth takes 24 hours to complete one full rotation around its axis. This means it takes 24 hours to cover 360 degrees or 24 into 60 that is 1440 minutes to cover 360 degrees. So it takes roughly around 1440 divided by 360 of 4 minutes to cover 1 degree. If we include the sun in the picture from the earth's point of view, the sun will be covering this distance of 1 degree in every 4 minutes. So if the sun appears to be above this place at this moment, after 4 minutes, the sun will appear to be over this place, which is 1 degrees from the first place. Therefore, these two places will have two different times. And this is what is called as local time. Let's understand this better with the help of an example. Suppose we have to determine the local time of Thimphu in Bhutan located at 90 degree east longitude when the time at Greenwich located at 0 degree is 12 noon. So the distance between Greenwich and Thimphu is 90 degrees. And we know the sun covers a distance of 1 degree every 4 minutes. Thus, to cover a distance of 90 degrees, the sun would need 90 into 4, that is 360 minutes or 6 hours. Now we also know Thimphu is in the east with respect to Greenwich, which means the sun would have already passed over Thimphu and right now would be above Greenwich where it is showing 12 noon. It means that Thimphu's time will be 6 hours ahead of Greenwich or Greenwich's time would be 6 hours behind Thimphu. Thus, we can say that Thimphu's local time shall be 6 pm. Now we have understood what local time is. But local time cannot be used for practical purposes. Let me explain. In our example, we calculated Thimphu's local time, which was located 90 degrees east. Now what if you ask about the local time of a place located very close to Thimphu, let's say 91 degrees east. Going by the same process as we did earlier, we will see that the local time comes out to be 6.04 pm. Can you see the problem? The local time changes with a slight change in the longitude. If we went by this arrangement, every place will have a different local time if they do not share the same longitude. This will create a lot of problems. For example, it will be difficult to prepare a timetable for trains which cross several longitudes at a stretch. So what's the solution? The solution comes in the form of standard time. This means for a region or an area, a common time is taken as standard time, which is governed according to one longitude, which is called standard meridian or central meridian. For example, for the entire country of Bhutan, which stretches geographically from 88 degrees 44 minutes east to 92 degrees 7 minutes east, only one longitude is considered for the determination of calculating the standard time, which is the 90 degrees east longitude. Thus, it doesn't matter where you are in Bhutan, your watch will show 6 p.m. when it is 12 noon at Greenwich. For the purpose of ease, the world has been divided into several time zones 
whose times are coordinated with respect to the prime meridian. To be specific, there are in total 24 time zones. Each time zone has a specific longitude chosen for standardizing the time. And it is called the central longitude or the standard meridian of that time zone. For example, the standard meridian of India has a longitude of 82 degrees 30 minutes east. This standard meridian passes through Mirzapur in Uttar Pradesh and is considered as the standard time for the whole country. This means that all of India is following the local time of this longitude, which is 5 hours 30 minutes ahead of Greenwich time or GMT. Similarly, there are different time zones across the world. In general, places located to the east of the prime meridian follow a time that is ahead of the GMT. On the other hand, places located to the west of the prime meridian follow a time behind the GMT. Sometimes a country can have a vast east to west extent. In such a scenario, following only one time can lead to a lot of problems. Therefore, multiple time zones are chosen in these countries. A good example of such a country is Russia. It has 11 time zones. Similarly, United States, Canada, Australia, Mexico and Brazil are some other countries that follow multiple time zones. Daylight saving time or DST is the practice of advancing clocks, typically by one hour during warmer months so that darkness falls at a later clock time. Generally, it is implemented by setting the clocks forward by one hour in the spring and setting them back by one hour again in the autumn to return to the standard time. This is primarily done because of the change in season, which in turn causes changes in the lengths of day and night time. To understand this practice, let's first understand how seasons occur. We know the Earth's axis is tilted at 23.5 degrees as it goes around the Sun in an elliptical orbit. Because of this, the Northern and the Southern Hemisphere experience their respective winter and summer seasons. When the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun, then it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. And the situation is reversed completely after a six-month period. During this entire cycle, Every place on Earth experiences a change in the length of the day and night. When summer approaches in the Northern Hemisphere, the daytime length increases and nighttime length decreases, and it is reversed come the winter season. The change in the length of day and night time is much more pronounced for the places located far away from the equator or in the higher latitudes. This change in the length of day and night time is why we opt for daylight saving time. Let's understand this better with an example. Suppose you are an office goer in the city of New York. Every day, your office starts at 9 a.m. and closes at 5 p.m. Around springtime, as the summers are about to start, the length of the day starts to increase. This means that sunrise will start to happen a bit earlier than usual. Let us suppose if it was happening at 6 a.m. normally, then as the spring sets in, it may shift to 5.45 a.m. and with each passing day, it may shift earlier, let's say to 5 a.m. Now, it makes sense to capture this extra one hour of sunlight for our daily activities and save energy that we otherwise need in the form of electricity. 
This can be done if we shift our clocks ahead by one hour. If it's 8 a.m. right now, according to your clock, you will forward it to 9 a.m. This means your office going time has been shifted to one hour earlier. And thus, you and your office can use this extra hour's sunlight in a much more efficient way. This forwarding of the clock makes the day start early for everyone without changing the normal timings and schedule for offices, trains, TV shows, etc. Like in our example, your office's opening time is 9 a.m. But in reality, you are going to the office one hour earlier. This continues for a few months and finally, the clocks are returned back to normal during the autumn, just before the start of the winters. This practice of daylight saving was formally adopted by Germany during the First World War in 1916 for the first time. This was actually done to maximize resource use during sunlit hours. The United States soon followed suit with the country's first seasonal time shift taking place in 1918. Most of North America, Europe, New Zealand, a few regions of Middle East, some countries of South America, and some states of Australia follow this practice, though each has a different start and stop date. 